Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Oshina. I am glad that you're here. I'm gonna be sharing some fall book recommendations in this video. So I'm excited to share some of these books that I would recommend for this fall season. It doesn't mean that they're set during the fall time, but they just either feel very appropriate for like a colder, more cozy time, or they just give me the vibes. You know, we're all about vibes these days and the season is here. So I'm excited to share these books and it's just a random list, really. They're stacked right here. So that's that. There's a couple that I don't have to hold up because I read them from the library and we will go from there. I'm gonna write them all down below with their authors. And if I have any like, I guess, videos that correspond with them, like if I did individual reviews or something, I'll link those down below too. And I'll link my last year's video down below, although I actually don't think I did one. So never mind. <laughs> but uh it's fine. And then also I'm wearing my fall shirt. So yeah. Um you would have seen this in my fall TBR video. And you actually may see some repeats from that video here because I did mention some books that I want to reread in that video that I would say have great fall vibes. So I'm gonna show them now. Yeah. Okay, so where do we want to start? I'm going to do YA, I think, because I have the smallest stack of YA. Um, so first of all, I would recommend Waterfall... Fall, what? Okay. I would recommend Waterfall by Lacey T. Berggren. Um, this is the River of Time series. This is book one. I think there's technically three books that complete the story, and then there's like more editions. I've only read this book, but I enjoyed it. And it definitely has fall vibes, I would say, because I don't actually know when it's or like what season it's set in. But I feel like because it's set during like an archaeological dig and then they like get transported to this medieval setting of Italy, anything medieval, I guess, feels fallish. I don't know why. I guess because it like is usually cold because like there's no heating. I don't know. But I mean, even the cover kind of looks, you know, fallish. Anything kind of darker, you know. Um, so yeah, this is like Christian YA. And it's like pretty entertaining. I gave it four stars. Check my Goodreads. I have reviews for all of these books. But I would recommend it for anyone who, yeah, likes kind of the medieval setting. You follow this girl and she felt like pretty realistic as a teenage girl. I did feel like it was a little bit insta-love, but like, it's fine, they're teenagers. And it was exciting because you're like in this kingdom and she's like figuring out how to adjust. And there's like a mystery of like how she even got there. And it's fun. So this is my first recommendation. So I listened to the audiobook while I was like reading the physical book and it was pretty good. The audiobook had like, I think it had um, like sound effects, which was pretty intense, but that was fun. Next YA is A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer because this book is like, so it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and the land is like in an eternal winter. So I guess this is more like winter, but whatever. It's cold vibes, you know? So yeah, Beauty and the Beast retelling, you follow this girl who has cerebral palsy, which is cool representation. And she gets sucked into, once again, like kind of a portal fantasy here. Um, she gets sucked into an alternate world that there's this prince who needs to fall in love because his land is in eternal winter. And if he doesn't fall in love, it'll stay in eternal winter. He also has this curse on him that he turns into a monster and he has to fall in love to break the curse. And this girl is pulled in to possibly fall in love with him. And it's pretty good. It's pretty fun. I would recommend it. The this I think this is the strongest book. And if you don't mind, like just read this one. Have a good time. Done. I just I loved the like I guess character development and like watching relationships form. And I think just everything about it was really good. So I'd recommend. I was gonna recommend the Lunar Chronicles, but it's kind of set kind of in summery time like there's like a desert and it's hot so it doesn't really feel like fall doesn't feel like fall but like fairy tale retellings feel like fall and kind of like a fun sci-fi YA series feels like fall so whatever here you go maybe you want, you want to read it okay next 
you already know. This is amazing. And I'm sure lots of other people are going to be sharing about this book this season because we recently, um, well, our book club recently read it in August. We love it. I think most of us, I don't know, but definitely read this. Okay. And I don't know when it's set, but once again, something about like medieval fantasy times, kingdoms feel like fall. I don't know why, but this has it so good. And this is Christian YA fantasy. So even better, um, totally clean all the things and read it. Okay, then I don't have this book to hold up because I don't own it, but A Thousand Heartbeats by Kiara Cass. This totally feels like a fall book, even though like kind of has like spring colors, I guess I would say, but oh, it's such a beautiful book. And it is fun. Like, the, once again, kingdom story. Um, and this is a chunker. So you're in for a time with this book. Um, it actually has three parts in the book. That's like how big it is. But yeah, you follow this girl who she's like trying to help her kingdom. Her dad is like a bad king and she is like getting married, but then she runs away because she doesn't want to get married and just stuff is going on. It has very uh, similar plot to The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. So if you liked that book, you'd probably like this one. This one's even like more tame, I guess. Like there's no weird magic in it. Um, it's totally like clean. There's like, I would say insta love and you know, the romance I guess is probably a little cheesy, but for YA, because like it fits with the writing a little bit more for like cheesiness in YA, it's more bearable, bearable. I don't know, it, I can enjoy it a little bit more. So it, I'm okay with it. And I would recommend it for this season and all the things, good. Okay, last YA, I think, is The Delusion by, I forget the name of the author. Wow, it's been too long. And I don't think I ever ended up owning this first book, even though it's my favorite one. It is what it is. But this one is a, like a contemporary modern story. So there you go. And it kind of has like supernatural aspects to it, which you could argue is fall vibes, but this is like real supernatural. Okay. This is not made up. Um, so you follow this boy who through circumstances ends up being able to see into the spiritual realm and see demons walking around and see what the demons are doing to people. And then he does end up seeing angels as well, but he's not a Christian. So he has no idea what go is going on and he feels like he's losing his mind and it's a trilogy. So you do follow the progression of him and all he learns about. And yeah, it's, it's a good trilogy. It definitely makes you think, um, this was my favorite book of the trilogy, but I would still recommend it as a whole. And I think it fits well with fall time. Okay, I think I'll go with like realistic fiction, which actually is all I have left anyway. Um, so the This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti. I read this in the fall time, um, almost two years now. And, uh, okay. For some reason, like supernatural just feels fall. And but this once again is real. <laughs> so you follow this pastor and he's in a town with his church and it's really struggling. There's a lot of like strife in the church. And you also get perspectives from angels and demons that are in this town. So it's not like you're following a character who can see them. You're actually following the perspectives of the angels and demons, which was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I just really enjoyed it. And this is a duology. So I feel like you could um, really get into this this season. And in particular, it really encourages the power of prayer. But I think just overall, holding on to your faith it's just like so encouraging showing how much power you have when you stand on the word of god and stand for his truth and the name of jesus and it's really exciting so yeah definitely recommend this um might be a little slow to get into but give it time you will understand what's happening and it's fascinating so good okay then i recommend iscariot by tosca lee i don't know if i ever showed that i got this book but I, I got this book and wow, so excited to have it. This was the cover I wanted. So I'm really glad that I got this cover. The other cover has like a tree on it or something. And I'm more drawn to this cover. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so this follows Judas Iscariot completely in his perspective, following him kind of from childhood up to what happens to him in the Bible. So some of it is speculation, but I appreciated it. I appreciated this perspective 
and it just worked for me. I don't know what it was, but I, I think I was so open-minded because I wanted to know what does Tosca Lee think was going through Judas's mind when he was with Jesus and like what brought him to betray Jesus. It's just crazy to think about really. And so then when you read this, it's like, oh, interesting. I never thought of it that way. And I really liked that. And so definitely thought provoking. It, go in with an open mind. It, this does not have to be true. This doesn't have to be real. But I think it's worth the read. I think it's worth considering. And I'd highly recommend it. Next, you got to read some France Universe this fall. And Redeeming Love, I think, is the best one just because, once again, it's historical. So historical, cold times set in the olden days. It just feels like fall. <laughs> so this, uh, yeah, I think it, it's good for fall. Most of you know what this is about. It's set in the 1800s and you follow this little girl starting with her like childhood, seeing what happens to her. She does end up getting stuck and pulled into prostitution and she is a prostitute as a living. But then you follow this farmer who sees her and God speaks to him and says that he needs to marry this girl. And so you follow the two of them and all the things, um, the faith in here, the love of God in here, the brutal moments, like definitely, it is just an, such a beautiful picture of God's redeeming love. Like it has the perfect title because that's exactly what this book is about. And I feel like it could be like really healing for a lot of women in particular, but anyone um, who has been abused because um, God never gives up on you. So yeah, highly recommend. Another like related story to Redeeming Love is Where the Road Bends. The romance in here is so good. I would say it, this is more romance heavy than like faith heavy. I, Redeeming Love felt more faith centric and this one is like more romance, but like they're both Christian fiction. And oh, yeah. so you follow this girl, she is like betrothed to marry this guy, but then another guy she finds half dead in her yard and she's like, uh, what, how did he get here? So she nurses him back to health and then stuff happens. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say, but it's so good. And I did make a video like recording my reaction to this book because, um, because of the video. So I'll link the video down below. It was pretty good. And I recommend watching it and reading this book because good times. Ooh, another Francine Rivers that I forgot. I don't own this book, so that's why I forgot it. But The Lady's Mine by Francine Rivers. This one is pretty much set in the same kind of like historical time in America. And, but this one, you follow a girl who she ends up inheriting this like business kind of and, and building in this town. So she moves there to like take care of it. She's very independent and she can take care of herself. But this town doesn't accept her very easily because they don't believe that women like, there's a lot of like women's rights in this book um, in a good way, not in an annoying way. Sometimes it's a little bit shoved down your throat. This one is not shoved, okay? <laughs> but there's definitely like women empowerment in this book, which was really fun to read actually. And the romance is very good. So yeah, and but it's just set in this historical town, feels fallish to me, has like a fallish cover, and I would recommend it. It's, I, it's definitely her most lighthearted book. There's not as many like deep, heavy, topics um as most of her other books have so if you want to like start out light i would start with this book still excellent though and definitely recommend it sticking with historical vibes i'd recommend the bridge to bell island by julie classen because this is more so like mystery than romance there is romance in it but this is like a murder mystery and i haven't read really much cozy mystery but this felt cozy because it was like fairly low stakes and just like very entertaining. And I just feel like it would be a good fit for the fall. I don't remember the season that it's set in, but it is set in England, which is fun. Really liked the characters and just, yeah, you follow this girl who her uncle is murdered and she might be one of the suspects, um, but then you also follow the dude who's trying to figure out who did it and they uh, have a romance, which is great. Moving into like some mystery sus suspense. Um, number one, I'd recommend Edge of Dusk by Colleen Cowell. I recently finished up this trilogy in the summer and I feel like this definitely has fall vibes because like it's definitely kind of, 
I don't know, unsettling maybe, not in like a bad way, but just definitely like if you want kind of the like woo vibes, um, I'd recommend this. And it's all like realistic. There's no like ghosts or anything, but there's like creepers in the woods. Okay. And stuff happens in the woods and you don't want to go out there. It's dangerous. Okay. Especially for women, but anyone don't go in the woods at night. Okay. Just don't do it. Even in real life, who would do that? Why? No, you know, like scary things happen in the woods at night. And that's what this book teaches you. Okay. But it's very exciting. You follow this lady who is like a patrol officer and there's weird stuff going on. There's bodies, there's missing people, and she has to figure it out. On top of that, she has some serious family drama that you want to know about because the tea is sizzling, okay? Because you you just don't even know. How, like her history, her relationship history, fascinating, okay? This, it felt real. Like this could actually happen and it is juicy. So super entertaining. I would recommend read them back to back. Just read the whole trilogy back to back and it's really fun and definitely entertaining. So highly recommend. Okay, also two books by the same author, Nancy Mel. Okay, she is really good. Really good romantic suspense because like it's less romance based and more like character driven, like crazy killers stuff, but like in a tame way that you could read it, but still in a disturbing way. You know, because it's Christian fiction. But okay, so number one, Mind Games. So good. The Faith in this book is really good. Highly recommend it for The Faith. Um, there's basically no romance in it. Like you do follow this FBI lady and this FBI man and their partners, but they're just getting to know each other. They don't know each other from the beginning. They're like paired together and meet for the first time in this book. So it's definitely like just friendship building and like trust building. But the stuff that happens in this book, so this trilogy in particular follows serial killers because that's what this lady does. She's a serial killer profilist. So she like tries to figure out who, ser who serial killers are based on what they're doing to like kill. <laughs> and it's fascinating. Like you get really into her mind and she does something like kind of weird, but just go with it because like it doesn't feel real, but like whatever. And I read the whole trilogy. It's really good. And satisfying romance in the end. So worth it just for that. And then Nightfall is the other one. I've only read this first book. This is a trilogy as well. And Nightfall was scary. I'll just straight up say that. Like, because you get perspectives from the killer and the perspectives were written like so creepy and disturbing. Like I almost, so I first started listening to it on audiobook and the prologue is in the killer's perspective. And I was freaked out. I was like, what am I listening to? This is disturbing. So I would recommend reading it, not listening to it because you will be freaked out. Like I was totally freaked out listening to this, but yeah. So I like actually stopped. I almost DNF'd it. Cause I was like, no, I'm not here for this. No, thank you. But then I actually got the physical book and I kept reading and I was like, oh, okay. This is, this is good actually. Cause I ended up liking the characters and you should read Mind Games first because a character from Mind Games shows up in Nightfall, which is very satisfying and that was fun. And I recommend both of those books. Okay, two more recommendations. Number one, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This book is sci-fi, but it, it has fall vibes just because like you're in space, so it's dark out there, you know? And it is, this is a quick read. It's so interesting. It's really fun to read. You follow this astronaut who wakes up on a spaceship. He has zero memories and he like doesn't even know his name. He doesn't know how he got, how he got there. He's like, I'm in a spaceship. How did this happen? Everyone else on the spaceship is dead and he has to figure out how to survive. It's crazy. And then you, you see other stuff happening and it's like, whoa. And then you do get like flashbacks to how he did end up on the spaceship, like him on earth and like why he's even on this spaceship, what's happening on earth. It was really fun. This is a great book. I would actually read it again. It, it was, it was pretty good. So I definitely recommend it. I don't remember if there's any language, but it's totally clean. And cause you just follow this one dude, he is all alone. And yeah, lastly, last book. The Good Sister, Sally Hepworth. Um, this book, I did not see it coming. <sighs> yeah. 
I, so this doesn't really feel fallish, I guess, because I don't remember when it's set, but it's kind of like a thriller drama and it is so entertaining. And I just think like, give Sally Hepworth a try. Her writing and storytelling is so good. It's, it feels really unique and just really well done. Like she is good at her craft, you know, that's how it feels. Um, so this book follows twin sisters and one of them definitely has some like neurodivergence. Like she is on the spectrum and then the other one is not, okay? And you get perspectives from the neurodivergent sister in present time, what she's up to, her perspective from all of the stuff that's happening. And then you get the other sister's perspective written in journal entries that are actually written in the past and show their life leading up to present. So it's, it is kind of dual timeline, I guess. But because one of them was journal entries, it felt more readable for me. I normally don't like dual timeline, but this one worked for me. And it is, you just like come to love this, this sister, like the neurodivergent sister. She is one of the best characters I've ever read about. And the whole like premise of the story is that the non -neuro neurodivergent sister wants to be a mom, wants to have a baby, but she cannot. She she can't get pregnant and so the twin is like you know what I'll get pregnant for her let's find someone to get pregnant with and you follow her looking for a dude to get pregnant with and all the stuff that happens from that and then also like their childhood of what it was like and it's so good it's so good so highly recommend um there are like mild like barely there swear words that are so easy to skip over and it's not like all throughout the book it's like once or twice and then there is like talk about the bedroom because this girl's trying to get pregnant and yeah but it's not like described in any way that is like I don't know like it's not about that and it's written in such a almost innocent way that it didn't bother me at all so I'd highly recommend it it was great oh done there's all my books i would recommend for this fall big long list cute right cute right and yeah i will write them all down below i hope you got some recommendations and i really enjoyed sharing this with you so thank you for watching you guys and have a good day i'll see you next time